So in today's video, I'm going to discuss how to become a data scientist. And the interesting point about this discussion is that if you are from the scientific or engineering domains, then you may be a partial data scientist at this point. And with a small amount of extra work, you can become a actual data scientist. So let us look at some of the skills which are necessary for data science. And I will also point out that many of these skills are present in most engineers and scientists when you compare these people with humanity and social science people. And especially these skills are present in a high degree in people who have done graduate study, that is masters or PhD. So let's look at some of the aspects of data science. So I think the first thing which you need to know in data science is programming. And essentially here, the language of choice is Python, though some people also use R, but I would say Python is more of a standard as far as data science is concerned. And most engineers and scientists are used to programming in MATLAB and they get used to MATLAB when they go to the university or technical institute. And one of the issues with MATLAB is that there are a lot of functions which are present in MATLAB which help you do a lot of calculations with matrices, vectors, finding roots of polynomials, and especially plotting, which is one of the main functions of a typical student or a researcher at a university. But MATLAB is expensive and it's a proprietary software and that is why many people prefer Python when you go out into the real world. Now Python had some issues, but these issues have been sorted out by creating libraries. So you must have heard of NumPy or SciPy or even Matplotlib. So again, one of the main features of MATLAB, which is very useful for most researchers, is the capability of plotting variables. And this particular feature is also now present in Python. So again, I would say that you may be at a university, you may be writing most of your code in MATLAB, you may be creating simulations in MATLAB, but it is a good idea to also start thinking of doing some of this work in Python. And if you do that, you essentially get a Python project on your resume. Now, the next aspect of data science is statistics. And essentially, you can start with the basic minimum statistics such as mean, median, mode, standard deviations, and further uh, statistics such as skewness and kurtosis. Now, it's a good idea to take a statistics course if you are at a university and learn something about the basic aspects of distributions of typical random variables and so on. So not only statistics is important, but also aspects of probability because essentially most variables are random variables and therefore it's a good idea to understand the nature of these random variables and also to realize that most data is contaminated with noise, which may be Gaussian or non-Gaussian. And again, statistical knowledge helps you to understand this kind of data. Now we turn to the next aspect of data science, which is visualization. And essentially most engineers are very familiar with these techniques. So most of the time we get some results and we create plots, diagrams, and graphs to look at these results. So that's one of the things which comes naturally to most engineers and scientists. So again, the typical graphical representations we are familiar with are scatter plots, line plots, time series data, histograms, polar diagrams, pie charts, and so on. So again, in many situations, just by plotting data, you can figure out certain trends in the data which can help you to find out problems which are taking place in certain systems. And this is one of the fundamental goals of data science. Now, once you have visualized the data, you may need to subject it to some further tools or to some further processing. So now this kind of data processing is at the heart of data science. And in many cases, raw data is hard to distinguish between two different systems. 
So let's consider a machine which is working fine and one which is damaged. So in this case, you will note that if you take sensor data and plot the time series, these data is, are going to look very similar. But if you do some feature extraction, for example, if you find the frequencies of the system, then you will find that these frequencies may have changed substantially. Now it's not just frequencies, but you can derive a whole lot of things and look at them. For example, in the case of data, if you take the derivative or the curvature, then you will find that these particular functions will amplify any sharp changes in the data. So this can be used for any kind of edge detection or damage detection. But whenever you do these kind of differentiations, this also increases the noise level in the data. So again, you need to do some kind of filtering before you subject them to some of these signal processing methods. Now, besides sig simple signal processing methods such as curvature or taking the Fourier transforms, fast Fourier transform and so on, you can also look at filtering algorithm. So put it very simply, if you just take the mean value of 10 points, that becomes a mean filter. If you take the median value, that becomes a median filter. So the mean filter typically removes Gaussian noise from a system. The median filter will remove non-Gaussian noise from the system and so on. Now you can go to further and more sophisticated methods such as wavelets or fractals and so on. And all these methods, essentially what they do is they take a particular curve and they try to bring out from this curve certain aspects where significant changes are there in the data. So again, a lot of this processing of data can help you to understand the state of the system, the health of the system, how the system is doing, and that's one of the main aspects of data science. Now, in many situations, you may have possibilities that a sensor is not functioning properly, so there is missing data or there is faulty data. So in these cases, you can replace this faulty data using estimation methods such as Kalman filters, or you could probably use virtual sensors based on machine learning, which could essentially calculate this missing data by using the physics, which is present between the remaining measurements which you have taken. So these are some of the aspects of data processing. And then the next stage is some kind of expert system, machine learning, fuzzy logic has to be used to essentially get some precise knowledge out of this data. So again, before you jump into machine learning, there are very simple methods such as we may apply a set of rules to the data and this could be part of an expert system which is essentially if then else statements which you put in a certain problem. So these if then else statements could be very simple. For example, if different sensor measurements are exceeding a certain bound that could signify a fault in the system and so on. If there is uncertainty present in these measurements, you could use fuzzy logic. If the data is quite complicated, you may also use supervised neural networks or unsupervised neural networks in case you want to split the data into two different patterns or two different sets. So essentially what neural nets do is they do pattern recognition. So they are able to detect certain patterns in a data and they can classify certain things. Again, some of the newest techniques in neural networks involves deep learning and this field is highly mathematical. So it really requires a good knowledge of vectors, matrices, and to some extent calculus, probability and stochastic processes. And so if you have taken many of these courses, you will be at an edge as far as data science is concerned. Now, the other thing to do is one should try to do projects to look at some of these problems. So again, in many situations, we have access to a huge amount of data coming from sensors today. And using this data, we can predict a lot of features about the system. So let's look at a problem which is different from typical engineering problems, such as predicting what particular movie you want to see. Now, if there is a history about the movies you have seen before in a certain streaming platform, then this history can be used to predict the next movie you are likely to see. So essentially what this machine learning is telling you is that you have been modeled by this machine learning. And therefore this model predicts that you may have a certain predilection toward a type of movie 
maybe you like to see science fiction movies maybe you like to see murder mysteries or maybe romantic movies or something like that so essentially this modeling of a person is one of the aspects of machine learning and data science and results in something known as curation which is used even in the youtube videos where you are sent videos which you particularly want to listen to based on the videos which you have listened to in the past now in many cases machine learning has to be used in conjunction with humans because machine learning cannot do all the things for you so for example a machine learning system may predict some stocks which you should buy and these could be based on certain features extracted from the data such as the yields given by a stock the p ratios and so on but at the end of the day the machine learning algorithm is probably going to throw a set of stocks to you and then you can sit down and further work on this and come to a final conclusion so the best approach of machine learning is when human beings sit together with the machine learning systems and look at the problem now many engineers view data in the context of numbers but this is not necessarily the case data can also be speech files it can be video files it can be pictures and so on so all these things are coming from various systems and today they can all be processed by machine learning to look into these problems now whether it is 2d files or 1d files they are all data they can be pixels or something like that and again you can code them all in binary form and use various data processing techniques on them so this is something to keep in mind and expand your concept of data to include all possible sources of data so again these were some concepts i had for you today and if you listen to my video carefully you would realize that you probably possess many of the skills which data scientists have if you have been going through a typical stem program especially if you are a masters or a phd student and also in many cases for bachelor's degree students now if you are going through one of these programs and you are a ug person take care that you take probability and statistics courses maybe courses on stochastic process machine learning kalman filters and try to improve your capability as far as data processing and signal processing is concerned make sure that you write codes in python do not fall victim to only the matlab syndrome because your professors may try to make you do that so if you write a lot of your codes in python even for your masters and phd program and your bachelor's thesis then you will have these particular codes to show the various companies which come for different data scientist jobs so again these were some points i had for you today i hope you enjoyed this video Stay tuned to my channel for more such videos. Thank you very much.